Aw, oh, you're so cute. Come on, Toto, we gotta film you today. You are such a handsome boy. Toto, are you ready for your close-up? Look at that cute little turtle face. He's like, I am not feeling this today. Leave me alone, woman. You have the cutest little face in the world. Do you know that? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be talking about these little creatures right here, turtles, specifically wild-caught turtles. So over about the past month, I've been getting quite a few comments that have been a little bit alarming to me um, regarding turtles, specifically wild turtles, which is why I'm making this video. And the comments have kind of been bothering me and I've been replying to them individually, but I feel like they're kind of increasing and I'm seeing more and more of the same type of comment. I don't want to call anyone out and that's not what this video is about. It's more of just like a general PSA on wild turtles and what to do when you find them. But I do want to kind of give you guys examples of what these comments are so that you guys can know what group I'm talking to. So just to give you guys an idea of what the comments are saying. Hi, I just rescued a box turtle. He almost got hit by a car. I'm going to keep him. What should I feed him? Or I just rescued a box turtle yesterday. He was in my yard and my dog almost ate him. I'm so excited. He's so cute. What do I do for him? And I also see comments that are like, I just got a new box turtle. His name is such and such. I rescued him last week from the middle of the road, but he's not eating. What should I do? So those are the types of comments that I've been getting recently. And and it seems like it's becoming more and more, but maybe I'm just noticing them more and more. I'm not really sure. But either way, it's been bothering me, so I wanted to address that here. So I just want to say something, and I want to put it out there to everyone who loves turtles, is interested in turtles, comes across my channel for turtle videos, or who is just seeking help for turtles in any way, shape, or form, whether they're captive bred, wild caught, or otherwise. I just want to make this very clear that this is my stance on wild caught turtles. Just because you find a turtle in the middle of the road, or in the wild, or in your yard does not give you the right or the license to take it home and keep it. I feel like the word rescue has been thrown around a lot on Instagram and in my comment sections and messages and DMs and things lately. And I feel like the word rescue has kind of gotten blurred and that there are a lot of people who are viewers or just out there in the world who don't really seem to understand what rescuing actually is and what constitutes a rescue and then what constitutes just capturing. There is a really big difference between rescuing an animal from the wild and capturing an animal from the wild. You may be meaning well, but you could actually be doing more harm than good. When there is a turtle in the middle of the road and you stop and you get out and you get the turtle and you move it to the other side of the road, that is rescuing. In and of itself, that is helping a turtle get out of harm's way. Whenever you find a turtle in the middle of the road or in your yard or in the wild or in a pond and you take it and you take it home with you, that turtle was not in immediate danger. That is capturing. That is taking an animal that was happy and healthy in the wild and bringing it home and forcing it to live in captivity dependent on someone else's care. That is capturing. That is not rescuing. If you were to find a turtle in the middle of the road that had obviously been hit by a car, that turtle is injured, you take that turtle not home, but to an animal hospital or an exotic vet or an exotic rescue, that is rescuing. There is a really big difference between capturing and rescuing, and I think that's something that I just need to clarify in this video. I support rescuing animals above anyone else, especially turtles. I have a huge soft spot for turtles and tortoises alike. I love them more than any other species on this planet, probably more than any other animal. They are my favorite animal. They are slow moving, they're innocent, and they're they're generally very mild mannered. They're just a very sentient creature and I love them. So when I see people commenting and messaging me saying that they've recently rescued a turtle that was in the road and they brought it home to take care of, it really makes my blood boil. I feel like if you're watching my videos and you think that taking a turtle from the wild and bringing it home is okay, then I think you've missed the point of all of my turtle videos. I feel like maybe you've missed the point of the entire message of my channel. I feel like the entire message has been lost in translation somehow and that maybe there is a marginal amount of viewers who aren't understanding what I'm about and what the difference between rescuing and capturing actually is. Okay, so does that make sense? The difference between rescuing and capturing, taking a sick animal to a vet or moving an animal out of the road into safety's way is the rescue side and capturing is taking a perfectly healthy independent animal and reducing it to a life in captivity. Okay, so if you guys are still watching, first of all, thank you. But second of all, if you feel like you have a really good grasp on what rescuing is versus capturing, then feel free to click out of this video. Or if you would like to continue watching, learn a little bit more about why it is bad to take turtles and tortoises from the wild along with other species of animals. Or if you just want to see Koa, 
please stick around. Okay, so now we're gonna dive deeper into why you should not keep a turtle that you find in the wild. The first thing, and in my opinion, the biggest reason why is because turtles can live up to 80 plus years. If you are a child or a kid and you find a turtle out in the wild, taking a turtle home on a whim that you just found is extremely irresponsible. Turtles can live up to 80 plus years. That is a lifetime and beyond commitment. The majority of turtle and tortoise owners who have committed to their animals typically have to plan for after they pass, meaning they generally have to have some who is willing to take on that turtle as a responsibility after they pass away. Turtles and tortoises are actually dinosaurs. They are ancestors of dinosaurs. They are one of the oldest living reptiles that are among the earth and honestly they're amazing. I love turtles and tortoises. I understand people's fascinations with them. I'm fascinated with dinosaurs anyway but then you find me a living breathing dinosaur today and I'm completely obsessed with it. But that doesn't mean that they are a good pet for a lot of different people. Because turtles and tortoises live so so long they are huge responsibilities the majority of turtles that you're gonna find in the wild and I am specifically talking about the United States of course it's applicable to outside of the United States but I know that it varies in a lot of different countries and I'm also not really familiar with a lot of species outside of the United States turtles in the United States are notorious for being captured from the wild whether they're pond turtles like red-eared sliders and yellow belly sliders or they're a land turtle like Chinese box turtles, three-toed box turtles, and of course the eastern box turtle, which is what my rescue koa actually is. So here's little koa. He is my 30-something year old eastern box turtle. This is one of the most popular species to be found in the eastern part of the United States and to be captured and taken from the wild. Obviously, he doesn't really look much like a box turtle. Um, you guys have seen him on my channel before, and if you haven't and you're new here, well, this is little koa. As you can see, Koa does suffer from metabolic bone disease. For 30 something years, he was kept in a 10 gallon tank on gravel. He had no substrate, no UVA, no UVB light, no worms, proper diet, calcium, heat, or otherwise. And as you can see, the neglect has taken a severe toll on his body, his shape, and his shell. As you can see, Koa's shell is extremely deformed. His scoots are extremely upturned. As you can see, Koa's plastron is also cracked and deformed, very dry. And that is from years of just being on the wrong substrate, not having the proper vitamins and minerals and diet. Whether you have a land turtle or a water turtle, they require very, very large habitat. For instance, and sliders. Female red-eared and yellow belly sliders can reach up to 12 inches in length. That's a really large turtle. And most people don't just have one. They'll usually have one or two different turtles. Now, whether these are wild caught or brought from the store, the care is still the same. You have to do regular water changes. You have to make sure that you keep that tank perfect and pristine to avoid any type of waterborne illnesses or shell rot on your aquatic turtle. And anyone who specializes in turtles will tell you that aquatic and land turtles do way better outside in outdoor enclosures or with artificial ponds than they do inside in captivity and tanks and things like that. As you guys know, I do keep Koa in a 40 gallon breeder, but that is because his vet specifically told me that that is best for him because he is deformed. Koa does have severe metabolic bone disease due to the neglect that he suffered for over 30 years. So he doesn't get around very well. So his 40 gallon tank is okay as long as I do give him plenty of outside time during the hot and warm months. So habitat. Turtles and tortoises, no matter what species they are, they do need very large habitats, preferably outdoors. The second reason that you should not keep a turtle that you find in the wild is diet. You can read all of the books you want, do all the research you want, buy all the fresh fruits and vegetables and worms and bugs and this and that. You can do everything that you're supposed to do for that turtle that you capture from the wild. But if that turtle is a picky eater, it's not going to matter how much research you did. It doesn't matter if you offer it the prettiest vegetables, the most organic or the most lively worms. If that turtle is a picky eater, you're going to run into problem. Wild caught box turtles are notorious for being picky eaters. It's just how they are sometimes. Whenever turtles go from being free in the wild to roaming and being able to eat what they want when they want to being put into typically a small box because their name is very deceptive. A lot of people think box turtle, it can live in a tote or a box for all of its life. And that just isn't the case. They typically get so stressed out that they a lot of times will refuse to eat, which can cause sickness, illness, deformities, and obviously later on death. Another reason you should never take a turtle from the wild is turtles have very specific needs. They have to have heat, basking spots, UVA, UVB, moisture, substrate they can dig down into, a well-balanced diet, 
all of the vitamins and nutrients that they would have normally gotten in the wild. They have to have calcium, they have to have live worms. So you can't just throw in a piece of lettuce. You have to provide them with fruits and vegetables. An artificial water source, whether it be a small outdoor pond or a large indoor pond of some sort. Their beaks and toenails are keratinous, just like our fingernails, so they are consistently growing. You have to consistently keep them trimmed. You have to provide your turtle with different terrains and also different surfaces to eat on. In the wild, turtles can naturally trim down their beaks and their nails as they're walking through the woods and eating and hunting and foraging. Whereas in captivity, again, it's another thing that you're gonna have to recreate for them along with everything else is something to be able to keep their beak and nails trimmed down on. Koa obviously didn't have anyone helping him with this for 30 years, so his beak and nails were terribly overgrown when I first got him. Even though I've had them trimmed down a few months ago by his vets, they are still overgrown and it is extremely hard to get them all the way down to perfection ever again. Whenever you take a turtle and keep it indoors in an artificial environment, you have to make sure that you mimic it perfectly. And if you don't, you can cause that turtle severe abnormalities in its shell, metabolic bone disease, calcium deficiencies, sickness, and so much more. I've been working with Koa for months and months, but the damage that has been done to his shell and his body is irreversible. It doesn't matter how many fruits or vegetables I get him to eat, how many worms, how much calcium, how long he basks, it just doesn't matter. The damage is irreversible. Taking an animal from the wild can do so much more harm than good. You really need to research and be positive that you have got it down before making a decision like that. You might think that turtle is so cute and so sweet and would be so easy to take care of, but I'm here to tell you I've rescued many, many different species in my lifetime. I have owned dozens and dozens of different pets. And I'm here to tell you that Koa is the most work of any pet I've personally ever had. If I would not have found Koa when I did, number one, he would probably be dead today. But number two, I would not own a box turtle. I've never wanted to own a box turtle. They are such a particular species and they require so much time, knowledge, if you're taking them and keeping them in an artificial environment, they require so much of you, so much effort and different things that honestly, it is a lifetime commitment and it's just not a commitment that just anyone is built to do. The truth is certain species of animals just do better in the wild than they do in captivity. And I believe that box turtles are one of them. Another thing that you have to consider whenever you're taking an animal out of the wild is hibernation. In the wild, turtles and tortoises hibernate during the cold month. Whenever you're taking them out of their natural environment, you're supposed to be able to recreate everything and that includes hibernation. However, the majority of turtle and tortoise owners don't hibernate their turtles because forced hibernation, artificial hibernation, is actually really dangerous. It's something that you have to have down to a science. It's something that you have to do a lot of research on, know what you're doing, and know how to do it properly or else you could kill your turtle. Hibernation is completely natural for turtles and tortoises in the wild. So the fact that Koa hasn't had a hibernation in probably 30 years is extremely alarming. However, I'm not even knowledgeable knowledgeable enough and confident enough that I could successfully get him to a hibernation safely. So even I'm scared to attempt it and I have done the research that it would take to do a hibernation. It requires you to get a personal mini fridge that's set at a very specific temperature. You then have to prep your turtle for months before you're gonna set them into hibernation. You have to follow a very strict diet and then reduce that diet slowly to where eventually you're not feeding them at all, which is very scary to do. If your turtle is not completely healthy and at a healthy weight going into this, you could very likely kill your turtle or your turtle could die while it's in forced hibernation. The reason that I advocate so strongly against catching turtles in the wild and keeping them is because of this right here. After I got Koa and I saw the damage that can be done to an animal by taking it out of its natural habitat, and failing to recreate it artificially for them. It's just something that I feel very strongly about. I'm very passionate about it and no animal deserves to have this happen to them because a selfish human took them from the wild and wanted to keep them as a pet. So I know this video is pretty long, but if you're still watching, I really appreciate it and so does Koa. If you find a turtle in the wild or in the road, please do not take it home with you. That turtle knows its way around. It knows how to survive. It is not in any immediate danger. In fact, you as a human are more danger to that turtle than just letting it go in the wild. So that's our little message. We just wanted to get it out to the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already follow me on Instagram or Snapchat, I will put that on the screen for you. Thanks again. I will see you guys in my next video. Be kind, bye.